Right, welcome to this review for uh, the new Primaris models here uh, from the uh, Shadow Spear box that the Games Workshop have released. So in this video, just going to focus in on the new models here, the new rules specifically. I'm going to cover everything, so points, costs, uh, new types of weapons and so on, all the stat lines. It's just to give you a, a real good idea of what to expect from these new and exciting models. So I'm going to cover the Vanguard Space Marines here. I, I am excited about this because I've got red scorpions you see and I'm working out at the moment. I've put them on temporary hold, my list, and it's because I want to see here if any of these units will make it in, sort of swap some units out because I've, I've sort of painted about a third of the army and then now very interested to see what these have to offer. And I think paint is up for red scorpions, they'll look superb. Vanguard Space Marines, okay, so. Just gonna flick for a few of the opening pages here. Vanguard Forces, right, so this is all your background information and you know, the justification for coming up with these. Agents of Terror. All right, so there's Reaver Squads. All your color schemes here. Yeah, Brother Erastis, Second Company, Third Squad Battle Line. All your squad markings. Nice, really nice. Oh wow, look at this. This is your markings here. They look good, they look good for painted for all the chapters. I'm just looking across here. There they are for Blood Angels. Mmm, tempting. <laughs> I could paint some up for my Blood Angels army. Nice. They look particularly nice for Dark Angels here. Real good. And then uh, Imperial Fists look good there as well. Wow. And then for Space Wolves. Yeah, they'll... All oh, right, and they give you a whole line of... Uh, all your painting reference here as well. This is your Infiltrator Squads. Yeah, looking nice. Your Snipers with the Bolt Sniper Rifle. And then the Suppressors here with the Accelerator Auto Cannon. Nice. Captain in Phobos armor, a librarian in Phobos armor, and then lieutenant in Phobos armor with mastercrafted uh, Oculus Bolt Carbine. Okay. So, just giving you an idea of how the structure of it all works here, just the data sheets. So, Defenders of Mankind. So you've got to ma match up your, you know, for your buffs and bonuses, just the usual rules. You've got to make sure the chapters match up with each other. Um, so, okay, non-codex compliant characters. Just read this out here. Uh, the following modifications apply to captains in Phobos armor, librarians in Phobos armor, and lieutenants in Phobos armor that are drawn from the Space Wolves or Dark Angels chapters. Right. So. This is how you modify here. If you decide that a Captain Phobos armor is drawn from the Dark Angels chapter, then its Captain keyword is replaced with the Master keyword. If you decide that a Librarian in Phobos armor is drawn from the Dark Angels chapter, it gains the Deathwing keyword and the following ability, which is Inner Circle. This unit automatically passes morale tests. In addition, you can reroll failed hit rolls in the fight phase for attacks made by this unit that target a fallen unit. If you decide that a Captain in Phobos armor is drawn from the Space Wolves chapter, then it's captain keyword is replaced with the wolf lord, all right, yeah, okay, so they're just making sure these all fit in, no problem. If you decide to take a librarian in Phobos armor from the space wolves chapter, then it's librarian keyword is replaced with the rune priest, right, that's great, so they'll tie in nicely, and if you decide that lieutenant uh, from the space wolves chapter, it's replaced with battle leader keyword. Uh, the last librarian, Adeptus Astartes Psychers, cannot be drawn from the black templars chapter. Yeah. And then abilities here, uh, the following ability is common to several Adeptus Astartes units, which is no snow, no fear, the usual rules for that. So, Captain in Phobos armour. It looks like he's uh, fixed with his war gear. Uh, I think, it says Captain in Phobos armour, it's 110 points, that's your cost. Movement 6, weapon skill, ballistic skill 2, plus strength 4, toughness 4, 6 wounds, loads of wounds, 5 attacks, loads of attacks, leadership 9 and 3 up save. Uh, he's armed with a camo cloak, a mastercrafted instigator bolt carbine, a bolt pistol, combat knife, frag and crack grenades. So, bolt pistol, use rules for that. The mastercrafted instigator bolt carbine, range 30, alright, excellent range, heavy 1, strength 4, minus 2, and 2 damage. And this weapon can target a character, even if it's not the closest enemy unit. 
This is interesting here. Uh, Games Workshop have seen the, the rise of characters and their strength of being able to hide behind units and it's very difficult sometimes to try and get through to them and especially to try and pick them off usually you can't do it you have to sort of take snipers but they're starting to introduce the abilities here and we've seen it uh, with the assassins and their new rules the ability to pick off characters the characters aren't as as well protected as they used to be so again you've got a sort of a standard model he's not he's just a captain but the weapon he's armed with means he can pick on characters interesting combat knife Frank crack raids. They should know fear. Does have the iron halo for the four plus invon save. Rights of battle. Reroll hit rolls of one for any chapter units within six. And camo cloak is plus two to save and throws for this model when you're in cover instead of one. So that's going to really help out when you're in cover. So they're designed to operate in cover and you get a great bonus for it. Concealed position. When you set this model up during deployment, you can set up anywhere on the battlefield that's more than nine inches from any models, uh, enemy deployment zone, and enemy models. So there's an infiltrator here. And then the Omni Scrambler, enemy units that are set up on the battlefield as reinforcements cannot be set up within 12 of this model. So it keeps them back from being counter-charged uh, with Deep Strikers landing nearby. That's excellent protection. Wow. So yeah, some great abilities there for the Captain in Phobos armor. So what I need to know now is the Mastercraft Instigator Bolt Carbine. Do you have to pay for it yet? Six points. So 116 points, and that's it. Yep, okay. So next is the Librarian in Phobos Armor. Uh, movement, uh, power level six by the way for the Captain, power level six here for the Librarian. Movement six, weapon skill three plus, ballistic skill three plus, strength four, toughness four, five wounds this is the great thing about Primaris. Four attacks, really good for a Librarian. Leadership nine, three up save. Uh, he, it comes with a camo cloak, this is this Phobos armor, uh, force sword, bolt pistol, frag, and crack grenades. Uh, he's 100 points. The force sword is 8 points, you don't have to pay for it. So, 108 points. And. No, so I've missed out some more here. You do have to pay for the camo cloaks. So, 3 points there. So, you have to add that onto the captain as well. And 3 points onto the librarian, making him 111. So use your rules for the four sword strength of the user, AP minus three and D3 damage. Uh, concealed position, so again you can infiltrate in. Camera cloak rules, and there's psychic could the usual rules. Add one to die the witch test made for this model against enemy psychos are in 12. Uh, then you can manifest two and deny one. Get no smite and two powers from the uh, obscuration. Obscura obscuration, okay, like obscure, trying to hide. Obsc obscuration, discipline. Uh, so which we'll check out as well, so we'll cover that uh, in this video also. So I, I've, I've complained a fair bit about Space Marine Psychic Powers, they're not that potent. I wonder how good, and by the name Obscuration, it may well be some Psychic Powers to add layers of protection uh, to your units. So next is the Lieutenant, is power level 5, these are all HQ by the way. Um, 80 points for him. Superb looking model. Painted up here for the Blood Angels with the uh, the golden mask here. Interesting. Movement six. Weapon skill is two plus. Ballistic skill three plus. Strength four toughness four. Five wounds. Four attacks. Leash eight. And a three up save. He's armed with grav shoot, which you have to pay for. Two points. Um, so you're on 82 points. Mastercrafted Oculus Bolt Carbine. So this is the Oculus one. Just cover the points for that. It's four points. It's cheaper than the Captain's uh, ranged weapon. Bolt Pistol, Close Combat Weapon, Frag and Crack Grenades. So uh, you're looking at 88 points. Master. Uh, so yeah, it's range 24. Rapid Fire 1. Strength 4. Remember, you've got your beta rules now for bolter weapons. Um, Bolt carbine, I think that applies. Strength 4, AP 0, 2 damage. Units do not receive the benefit to cover for their saving throws against attacks made by this weapon. So it's okay. Uh, and then he's got grav shoots. During the deployment, you can set this model in low altitude instead of placing it on the battlefield. End of your movement phases. Any of your movement phases, you can descend. Uh, unless it's turn 1. 
I believe that's the current rules. Set it up anywhere on the battlefield that's one nine inches away from anyone else. It's a deep striker. Tactical precision, which is reroll wound rolls of one as per usual, and knife fighter. Each unmodified hit roll of six made for attacks with his close combat weapon scores two hits instead of one. A bit of a bonus there as well. Okay, there's another lieutenant option just to add one with a bit more bite, just marginally, not nothing major with him. Alright, infiltrator squads. This is going to be interesting here. So, the power level 5, it's another troop's choice, great, because people said, oh, intercessors, they're okay, but now you've got the option to go for infiltrators here. Uh, 22 points. And then it says here in brackets, the infiltrator helix adept is 32 points. You're paying an extra 10 points for him. Hmm. Uh, squad of 5, one sergeant, four infiltrators. You can include up to four additional infiltrators, and an Infiltrator Helix Adept. Mm. Power rating plus six. Power level five, by the way. Each one is armed with a Marksman Bolt Carbine. Okay. Bolt, Pistol, Frag and Crack Grenades. So the Marksman Bolt Carbine is zero. So it's a flat 22. Intercessors are 18, so four points is the difference. So the Carbine, then, range 24. I thought it might be an 18, but it's range 24. Rapid fire 1, uh, strength 4, AP 0, 1 damage. Each unmodified hit roll of 6. This weapon's attacks automatically hits and results in a wound. Do not make a wound roll for that attack. Ah. Interesting. No restriction against vehicles or. Any 6s immediately go straight through and it becomes a wound. Okay, it's quite versatile against very tough targets. And that's about it for that weapon. So the weapon's okay. Uh, she can go for combat squads, uh, concealed positions as per before. So you, as long as you deploy nine inches away from the enemy deployments on enemy models, omni scramblers, enemy units that are set up on the battlefield as reinforcements cannot be set up within twelve. So even this unit here has that protection. So the helix adept. You're paying ten points more at the end of any of movement phases. Uh, an Infiltrator Helix Adept can attempt to heal or revive a model from its unit. Oh, superb. Wow. So it's a, a model built into the unit. That's very cool. If the Infiltrator Helix Adept's unit contains a wounded model, the model regains one lost wound. If its unit contains no wounded models, but one or more of its models has been slain, or already six, and a five plus one model is returned to the unit with one wound remaining. If the Infiltrator Helix Adept fails to revive a model, he cannot shoot in your next shooting phase as he recovers the gene seed of the fallen warrior. But sort of an inbuilt medic here. That's very cool. I'll just look him up. Just to see. There he is. Uh, there he is, yeah. Just there. So he's got on his wrist, like, like an ap apocryphary has here. That's what he's got mounted on his wrist. Something similar to that. And also this medi backpack here. Uh, just mounted behind. So that just separates him out from that squad. I would say definitely go for the upgrade. But it's it's fixed to that squad, so you can't go around helping other squads out. Bit of an incentive to go for bigger squads then, to get the most out of them. And then you've got smoke grenades. Once per battle, instead of shooting any weapons, the unit can use its smoke grenades and until your next shooting phase. Your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls made of ranged weapons that target this unit. So if you find yourself out of range and you get stuff to fire at, then you just chuck your smoke grenades and uh, gives them, makes them a bit harder. So the rules aren't, again, Games Workshop have, uh, I think, done well here. No crazy, silly rules. Quite sensible. You know, it's, it's not like it's, oh, these are amazing and everyone buys the box set. They're just, they've made some sensible rules here for these and uh, some decent rules. I love that Helix Adept. Very, very cool. Okay, so that's your standard infantry, but a great option there. You've got another option for infantry. Uh, suppressor squad next. This is fast attack. So, power level 5 for unit 3, the sergeant and two suppressors. Movement 12. Let's just check it down here. They start at 18 points each. Okay, so cheap enough. Movement 12. Weapon skill, ballistic skill 3+, plus, strength 4, toughness 4, 2 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 7, that's quite low, 
uh, and I suppose it's standard here. Yeah, you need the sergeant. Free up save. The sergeant has an extra tech, an extra uh, morale. Each model is equipped with a grab shoot, and armed with an accelerator, auto cannon, bolt pistol frag, and crack grenades. So. Okay. The accelerator auto cannon then is 15 points a time. That bumps up the cost. So you're looking at the unit three of them, about 85 odd points, so short of 100. No. No, virtually 100 points. Yep. Oh boy. Is it worth it? Mm. Then you've got uh, the accelerator auto cannon, range 48, the range is superb. It is strength 7, it's heavy 2, strength 7, AP minus 2 and 2 damage. I don't know if that's that great. Yeah, I wonder. Uh, it's heavy, so the moment you land, you're on minus 1 to hit immediately. It's a bit of a contradiction because you have uh, heavy weapons mounted on a unit that can move around fast. So. You know, if you make your fast moves, it affects your shooting. If you sit still, that sort of defeats the object at times of taking you units able to move quick. So they're an interesting combination here. Yeah, I'm not sure how popular these will be because they're quite expensive in points and not that hard to destroy, really. Three up, save two wounds, you know, six wounds to try and chew through. So if you do use them, you've got to be careful because the opponent can bring them down quite quick. Little grab shoots, you can deep strike in. But then they're five power when they land. It's not going to blow stuff away. Six shots. On average, what are you going to get? Four hit, uh, three hits at minus one to hit rolls. You could put a couple of wounds on a vehicle, bring down a couple of infantrymen, and that's about it. Uh, they've got suppressing fire though. If this unit destroys enemy, any enemy models in your shooting phase of its accelerator auto cannons, the destroyed models unit cannot fire Overwatch until the end of the turn. So a useful rule, you pick off a few casualties and then it's no overwatch from that unit uh, against whoever. You know, you could line it up so another unit charges in and it'll stop overwatch. That's useful. That's useful for sure. Okay. Uh, next is the Eliminator Squad. That's heavy support. Power level 3. Uh, 18 points. Yeah, these look pretty good. So, movement 6, weapon skill, ballistic skill 3 plus, strength 4, toughness 4, 2 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 7, 3 up, save, sergeant's just an extra attack, an extra leadership. Uh, they're armed with, you get unit 3, and that's it, you're stuck with that, it is a unit 3, you can't make it bigger. Uh, they're armed with uh, camo cloaks, uh, bolt sniper rifles, bolt pistols, frag and crack grenades. So, the eliminator squad uh, is 18, and then uh, the rifle is three so 21 points each camo cloak at uh, 24 points in total so 72 points for unit three of them it's not bad um so how good is the sniper rifle this is the big question so this weapon can target a character even if it's not the closest enemy unit as standard with uh, sniper units in addition uh, you choose one of the profiles below so i'm trying to think i'm trying to take out a character i want to Fire this unit and just delete a character. So it's got four wounds. Do enough damage to get through. So you go for the execution around, which is range 36, heavy one, strength four, AP minus two, D3 damage. If you make any wound rolls of six or more, it inflicts a mortal wound in addition to its normal damage. That's pretty good. Those three firing, if they're accurate enough, they could take down sort of your standard or cheap sort of character. So that's good. Or you can go for the Mortis round, heavy one, range 36, strength 4, minus 1, 1 damage. This weapon can target units that are not visible to the fire. <laughs> no way. Because <laughs> that's, the, again, the problem with characters, people just hide them behind line of sight, blocking terrain. Add two to hit rolls made for this weapon. Units do not receive the benefit of cover for their saving throws. Uh, against attacks made with this weapon. Wow. That's scary. Now they can justify, you can fire at targets you can't see. But uh, that's what it is. And then the hyper frag round, range 36, heavy D3. So potential of between three and nine shots for the unit. Strength four, AP zero one damage. I doubt that's gonna be used very much at all. So say the best round there is the execution round, just stand around for taking out characters. The mortis round, if you find that characters are out of line of sight, then you've got an option 
to fire at targets you can't see. Wow, that is exceptionally useful. Really, really good. Got camo cloaks as usual, so plus two for the same pros in cover, which no doubt they'll be placed in cover. So three up save becomes a two up with an extra sort of bit on top, and then conceal positions for them. Yeah, they're a decent sniper squad there, the Eliminators. Yep. Get them in cover, well protected. Yeah, they're primary, so good wounds on them as well. Really good. But cheap enough, and their five powers, um, scary enough. Yeah, so choose. I take those over suppressors for sure. And the infiltrators are okay. So, Sons of the Primarchs. So, you got your chapter tactics, and, and then Defenders of Humanity, the usuals there. So, this is all standard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think this all remains. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this remains the same. I've just checked ultra trains, it's the same. Imperial fists, no benefit for saving throws if you can cover. Yeah, so uh, they, they put this in because you're going to need that um, from the original codex if you're going to start using it in game. So the games workshop had to put that in. Ah, yes. All right, new warlord traits. Yeah. Okay. And the psychic powers as well. Right, so uh, obscuration discipline. So remember, this this librarian's it's got option to take two plus mine. So shrouding, shrouding is a warp charge value of six. Nice, quite easy one to score. If manifested, select a friendly adept as a start is Phobos unit. Right, so you are restricted to that within eighteen. So the start of your next psychic phase, any models can only shoot this unit if it's the closest target that is visible to them. That's uh, that's really really good. Immediately, that is a superb psychic power. So you cast that onto your snipers, and they can sit at the back, and be proved to be very difficult to shoot at them. Full stop. That's excellent. So shrouding is uh, immediately very powerful, but only limited to Phobos here. Not all of them. One, the first three, by the looks of it, and the others are open to regular space marines. Interesting. Scryer's Gaze has a warp charge value of 6, if this is number 2. If manifested, select a friendly adept as the start is Phobos unit of 18, the Psyker. To the start of this next Psychic phase, you can, can re-roll failed hit rolls for attacks made with the unit's ranged weapons. Any units, any models do not receive the benefit of cover to the same throws made for ranged attacks made by that unit. Right, again, another major boost, uh, again, for the snipers. Re-rolling your hits, ignoring cover. Decent enough. Uh, temporal corridor. So warp charge value of six. If manifested, select adapters to start his Phobos unit within three inches of the Psyker. The unit can immediately move as if it was a movement phase. It cannot fall back as part of this move, and it must advance. Oh, we're wrong to see how far it advances. Roll three d6 and discard the two lowest results. You cannot use temporal corridor on a unit more than once per Psychic phase. Okay, so it does restrict you, you have to move. Uh, you move, you can't be a fullback, and you must advance. You can't charge, so you, um, you're not be able to do the double move and get the charge off with that. So some restrictions there, and again, it only applies to Phobos units, but it's okay if you're looking to move quickly around the board. I, 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 shrouding's the best here, Scryer's Gaze, I reckon, so far. Hallucination, number four. So what charge value of six? If manifested, select an enemy unit of an 18, visible to the psyche, and to the start of your next psychic phase, subtract one from that unit's leadership characteristic. This is poor. Uh, in addition, your opponent must roll 2d6. If the result is greater than the unit's target unit's character, leadership characteristic, subtract one from hit rolls made for that unit to the start of your next psychic phase. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's alright. Okay. Uh, Tenebrous Curse. So warp charge value of 6, if manifested sex, an enemy unit that cannot fly, invisible to and within 18 of the Psyker, the unit suffers a mortal wound. In addition, to the start of your next Psyker phase, halve that unit's movement characteristic as and the result of any advance or charge rolls made. So if you want to try and lock a unit down, pin it down, stop it from moving as quick, then Tenebrous Curse is a good one to go for. It's alright. Uh, and then Mind Raid. 
There's a warp charge value of 6. If Manifestor selects an enemy model within 18 and visible to the psychers, it could be anyone, even a character sort of hidden behind other units. That model's that unit suffers a mortal wound. If your army is battle forged and the model you chose was a character, you can then roll 3d6. If the result is equal to or greater than the model's leadership characteristic, you gain a command point. So yeah, you can do that each turn, just harvest command points. Yep. With Mind Raid. Interesting on that one. I think that would be quite useful tactically, just to start grabbing um, command points, yeah. Interesting. So there's a mixture there. Yeah, that shrouding is powerful though. Wow. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, warlord traits then, because you've got the lieutenant, the captain, librarian here, you know, these characters that can be made into warlords. So, shoot and fade. Immediately after making a shoot attack, apart from when firing overwatch, your warlord can move as if it was the movement phase. If it does, it must advance as part of this move, so you can shoot and then move off quickly. It's alright. Princeps of Deceit. If your warlord has this trait, at the start of the first battle round, but before the first turn has begun, pick up three friendly chapter infantry units that are on the battlefield. You can immediately move these units, remove them from the battlefield, and set them up as described in the deployment section of the mission you're playing. If both players have abilities that allow them to redeploy units, roll off and the winner chooses which player redeploys their first units first. All right, so some tactical help there. And useful enough, definite. Master of the Vanguard, add one to the movement characteristic of friendly chapter units whilst within six inches of your warlord. In addition, add one to advance and charge rolls made for friendly chapter units whilst within six inches of your warlord. Yeah, plus one to charge is useful if you're going to play aggressive. Not bad. And uh, stealth adept, subtract one from hit rolls that target your warlord. Okay, useful enough. And then target priority. Instead of shooting with your warlord in your shooting phase, you can select one friendly chapter unit within three inches of it, and one enemy unit that is visible to your warlord. To the end of the phase, add one to hit rolls for attacks made by that friendly unit that target uh, that enemy unit. Add one to the hit rolls. Yeah, so basically turning your threes into twos to hit. Um, if it's a captain nearby, you can your reroll ones. So you're sort of making some very accurate firepower there. Yeah, okay. And then uh, Marksman's Honours. The damage characteristic of ranged weapons for your war warlord is armed with is increased by one. In addition, you can reroll found hit and wound rolls for shooting attacks made by your warlord. That's superb, and your warlord trait does not apply to grenade weapons, uh, but it does apply to chapter relics. Wow, so that's strong enough. Plus 20 damage, rerolling wounds, and, shoot, and uh, hit rolls. That's a marksman's armor is uh, powerful enough. And there's your, there they are fighting against the tower. Uh, and then there's all your points covered there at the back. So that's the review for the Vanguard Space Marines. Absolutely superb models. So I'm sure a lot of Primaris players will be proud to have them fighting alongside their current units. I think the rules are sensible enough. It's great you've got another psychic discipline that you can delve into. And some excellent psychic powers as well. Uh, available, so I'd, I would say expect to see Vanguard Space Marines being mixed in with regular Primaris, no problem at all. Uh, and now even more variety for this very popular uh, faction here that Games Workshop have put together. So that's the review. Keep a look out for uh, the Demon Kin review. Plan to review that in separate videos. You can check out again, just like you've seen here, all the stats, uh, the whole book being covered, just to give you a real idea of what to expect from these new units. But um, that's the review. Keep a look out uh, for more reviews on the channel. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.